This is Dave V3OI and this video is a companion to my other videos regarding my Arduino Ready PSK transceiver. In this video I describe the synchronization and the character framing for Ready and PSK. I found very little information on this subject and I, and I decided to put this video together to explain what little I know. Ready just like PSK is complex to explain however it's it's much easier to implement than PSK. Basically, RIDI is transmitting using two fre frequencies. There's a mark frequency which represents a binary 1 and a space frequency that represents a binary 0. The separation between mark and space frequencies is a function of the RIDI mode. For my Arduino project, I use a separation of 170 Hz. The data is sent uh, 8 bits at a time. There's a start bit, 5 data bits and two stop bits. You can also send 1.5 stop bits instead of two, but uh, I found it's far easier to process two stop bits. The five data bits are encoded using BODOT. I think this is actually pronounced as BODO, but I'm going to pronounce it as BODOT. And uh, I'll apologize to my French uh, viewers. It's important to note that ASCII is not transmitted here. There's also an idle condition where the transmitter will send a continuous mark frequency that's at least 8 mark bits in duration. This is used to synchronize the transmitter and receiver. Later on I'll show that this is not always true, but for the time being let's just say that when the channel is idle, at least 8 mark bits will be sent. In order to understand the transmission of any di digital signal, you need to define what the bit time is. In the case of RIDI, it's the time a mark or space frequency must be turned turned on for. It's basically the time to transmit each bit and it depends on the baud rate. When the baud rate is the same as the bit rate, the bit rate's easy to cal calculate. For RIDI 45, the bit time is uh, 22 milliseconds. This means that the mark or space carrier must be turned on for 22 milliseconds for each bit being transmitted. The process to transmit RIDI is fairly straightforward. First, at the start of any new RIDI session, or whenever there's no data to transmit, the transmitter sends an idle condition, which is the continuous mark frequency. When there's data to transmit, the transmitter sends a start bit, which uses the space frequency. After the start bit, the transmitter then sends five data bits using a combination of mark and space frequencies. At the end of the trans transmission, the transmitter will send at least two stop bits, which uses the mark frequency. If there's another character to be transmitted, another start bit is sent and the process repeats itself. Whenever ASCII data is transmitted using RIDI, it's first translated to BODOT, which is a five character code. BODOT uses two 32 character tables, one for letters such as uh, A to Z uppercase, and the other four figures such as numbers 0 to 9 or special characters. There's also a special code which tells the receiver to switch to letters or figures. For example, to send an alphabetical character you would send a letters code then you'd send a BODOT code representing the character. If you wanted to send a number you'd send a figures code and then send a BODOT code representing the number. There are a number of BODOT lookup tables and techniques used to perform the lookup available on the internet. There's also several YouTube videos describing BODOT. I had no trouble whatsoever finding information using Google. I'll summarize ready transmission using these two diagrams. The top diagram shows how bits are framed and characters are transmitted. Each orange box represents a ready bit time. For ready 45 this is 22 milliseconds. Orange boxes with an M means it's a mark bit or it's a mark frequency that's present for 22 milliseconds. Boxes with an S means it's a space bit or a space frequency is present for 22 milliseconds. Boxes with an M slash S means it's either a mark or a space bit. There are eight mark bits sent to synchronize the channel. Once the receiver detects idle, it starts looking for a start bit to signal data transmission. For RIDI, the start bit is a space bit. After the start bit, a 5-bit BODOT character is transmitted. 
After the fifth bit is transmitted, two stop bits are sent. The stop bits are space bits. Once the two space bits are sent, the transmitter may start sending another character. The bottom diagram shows a sequence for transmitting VE3OOI. Each box represents a ready character that's sent and it doesn't represent a bit like the, uh, like the prior diagram. Once a channel has been initialized with the idle sequence, the transmitter sends the letters code followed by V and E. Before sending 3, the transmitter must notify the receiver that it's shifting to figures and it sends a figures code followed by 3. Since the receiver is now expecting figures, the transmitter must notify the receiver to switch back to letters and it sends the letters code followed by OOI. Once the transmission is complete, the transmitter sends idle sequences. I've noticed that FL Digi and DM780 send letters code as the idle sequence. There's an article written by W7AY describing why this is done. PSK is difficult to explain and even more difficult to implement in software. Ready uses frequency shift keying, which is much easier to visualize. PSK uses phase shift keying, where the carrier's phase is shifted by 180 degrees. When a 180 degree phase shift is present, it represents a binary zero. And when no phase shift is present, it represents a binary one. In PSK, the idle condition is when continuous 180 de degree phase shifts are sent. When the channel is idle, if a binary one is detected, then it marks data as being transmitted. This is similar to the ready start bit, except in this case, the first one bit uh, counts as data. PSK is transmitted using VariaCode. This is a similar lookup table as RIDI except the length of the codes is variable. For example, the VariaCode for capital A is 7 bits long and the VariaCode for lowercase e is only 2 bits long. VariaCode is designed such that there are never two consecutive bits present in the code. This avoids the receiver thinking it's an idle condition or end of transmission. Varicode also starts and ends with a one bit. The first one bit in Varicode signals the receiver that data is being transmitted. For PSK31, the bit time is 32 milliseconds. That is, a phase shift or no phase shift is expected every 32 milliseconds. When at least two consecutive 180 degree phase shifts are transmitted, this lets the receiver know its end of transmission. When no data is being transmitted and the channel is idle, consecutive phase shifts are sent every 32 milliseconds. For a PSK transmission, you would start off by transmitting the idle condition, followed by the very code, then send at least two zero bits to mark the end of transmission. The top smaller diagram is showing how a 0 and 1 bit are transmitted using PSK. The orange cell represents a bit time of 32 milliseconds for PSK31. The thin red bar represents a phase shift. If no red bar is present in the bit time cell, there is no phase shift. When there is a phase shift in the bit time cell, it represents a binary 0. And if there is no phase shift, it represents a binary 1. The lower larger graphic is showing a typical PSK transmission. At the start, there, there's multiple zeros being sent. This is the idle condition, which synchronizes the transmitter and receiver. Varicode always starts and ends with a 1, so whenever a 1 is detected after the idle condition or, or after an end of transmission, it signals the receiver that Varicode is being uh, transmitted. During each bit time, the receiver checks to see if there was a phase shift. If no phase shift, then a binary 1 was received, and if a phase shift is present, then a 0 was received. The receiver would shift each received variacode bit to form the variacode character. If the receiver detects two consecutive phase shifts, then it knows this is the end of transmission, and the last binary 1 bit it received was the last bit of the varicode. After receiving the end of transmission, 
The receiver converts the Varicode to ASCII using the Varicode lookup table. After sending the end of transmission, the transmitter may start sending the next Varicode character. When transmitting PSK, you need to know how many characters to transmit. That is, you need to know how many bits are in the Varicode. So what I've got here is a simple function that returns the length of the Varicode. Basically, you would shift all bits until the value of the Varicode is zero. So this summarizes the sequence that's used to decode uh, PSK. So basically, you would need to lock on onto the carrier, and once you have the carrier in your passband, you then start searching for phase shifts. Once you de detect the idle condition, then you start searching for data. That is, you start looking for a non-phase shift. When data is being received, then you need to keep an eye out for consecutive phase shifts which is going to indicate the end of transmission. So this marks the end of the video and I hope this information was helpful. If there's anything missing or you need to add anything to the video, please add comments or create a, another video which uh, better explains uh, the process.